because these companies are not going anywhere at the end of the day. I mean, they potentially might change names if they go through bankruptcy, um, you know, but there's these fixed assets there. We're not going to liquidate cruise ships. We're not going to, you know, scrap these airplanes. Airplanes are still going to be around. Who should be getting a bailout and who should not be getting a bailout and, and why? Um, so if we're thinking about large firms that have access to uh, um, kind of broad equity and capital markets, when you're thinking about that, I think the question of bailouts is essentially a redistribution question of, of, about who is going to get hurt by this shock. Is it going to be um, ultimately the shareholders of these firms or is it going to be the debt holders of these firms? Um, when we're con contemplating bailouts to these companies then, like cruise ships and airlines or airplane manufacturers like Boeing, um, what we're really contemplating in the end is, is whether it makes sense to provide transfers to the shareholders of these companies. Um, because these companies are not going anywhere at the end of the day. I mean, they potentially might change names if they go through bankruptcy, um, you know, but there's these fixed assets there. We're not going to liquidate cruise ships. We're not going to, you know, scrap these airplanes. Airplanes are still going to be around. Air travel companies have gone through bankruptcy in the past uh, successfully and continue to operate through those periods. Um, so when we're thinking about these transfers then, we're basically essentially asking, does it make sense to provide large transfers through the government to the shareholders of these companies? Um, and I think there, we should think about, um, you know, who's ultimately best able to bear the consequences of this recession? So, you know, it's not fair in some sense that, you know, we have this pandemic and output has declined and income has declined. Somebody is going to have to face the consequence of that recession. Um, there's no claim that, uh, you know, the travel industry caused this pandemic to, to happen. It's not the fault of airlines that nobody is traveling right now. Um, but at the same time, um, output is going to be lower and income is going to be lower and somebody is going to have to suffer the consequences of that. So if we're thinking about what would we like as a you know, society that values equity in some sort of way or values insurance is that um, you know, probably we want to be focusing our stimulus and focusing our transfers um, on the households who are least able to bear the consequences of this recession. And if you're thinking about that, you know, that's probably not the shareholders of airlines. You know, relatively speaking, the shareholders of airlines are going to be relatively well off. They're going to be relatively able to bear the consequences of a negative shock to their income for, for some period of time. So I think transfer, you know, direct bailouts to large publicly traded corporations, especially those with kind of large fixed assets who are, you know, probably going to come out of this recession at the end of the day um, and be able to operate reasonably well again, doesn't, um, you know, have the biggest bang for the, the buck in terms of the dollars that we can be spending. Um, now, if you think about other types of businesses in the economy, like the small firms that are out there that are not publicly traded and don't have the same um, sort of access to, to broad funding, I think there there's much more of an argument for kind of targeted stimulus towards small businesses because um, it can be very potentially disruptive uh, if there's large waves of liquidation and these businesses kind of going going under. It's much less likely that, you know, a small restaurant or a small retail store is going to be able to continue operating through a bankruptcy proceeding and then ultimately emerge from that. It's much more likely that these firms are just going to shut down and liquidate and they're not going to be there anymore when the recession ends. Uh, their workers are not going to be able to come back and there's going to be large disruptions caused by that and basically permanent consequences of this recession that we would like to to avoid you know i think a, a key thing should sort of be hopefully this is a relatively transitory event you know on the order of months not years and what we'd like to avoid through our policies if we can is that this transitory event to the extent possible doesn't have permanent consequences on the economy that we can recover when we uh, 
get rid of the, the health threat at the end of the day.